How do we get to this point in Australia where we're starting to talk about condensation and water vapour management? Ultimately, I refer to this as a cascade of intervention. Prior to the energy efficiency regulations, there was no insulation in our buildings. When buildings are uninsulated, there are no cold surfaces. All the heating and the energy keeps the surfaces warm and the condensation and mold growth risk does not necessarily exist. When you insulate your buildings, you create a te temperature differential that creates a cold surface, a potential for condensation or high humidity. When you have high humidity in your building structure, you potentially induce mold growth. This creates the need for internal vapour control layers to completely eliminate the mould risk in our structures. The NCC 2022 is now forcing the use of vapour permeable membranes on the outside of the structure. Vapour permeable membranes or membranes on the outside of the structure are primarily there for a waterproofing mechanism. So we need to make sure these membranes are implemented well, they're weather tight and well sealed, but then we need to make sure that we don't create mould growth. This is why we have the vapour permeability requirements in the NCC. We know that building weather tight buildings is the most important factor for moisture management in the structure. And New Zealand learnt the hard way. The New Zealand leaky building crisis led to $47 billion of damage, which was a 2019 figure, probably even more than that now. And we need to make sure that we don't replicate this across Australia. In terms of where we are now and where we need to be, we're about halfway there. The NCC is now calling up vapour permeable membranes in climate zone 4 to 8. We also need to consider that we need intelligent air barriers on the inside of the structure to build truly healthy, durable and energy efficient buildings.